Okay guys, RC here. Just going over the Fusion N Bell and some do's and don'ts. I'm fairly new to N Bells overall. I mean I know how to use an N Bell, but there are things I've had to learn. Uh here's the new Fusion N Bell. Uh it is heat sealed. It does not you can see this is one he overheated just a hair. Um, the thing is, there's a couple tips and tricks with end bells. Uh, one thing is your timing is controlled by the leading edge of the brush, which is right here and right here, because the motor will turn clockwise. Okay, so that being said, you want to make sure that those two points are relatively in the same spot and as you can tell I intentionally picked this one because you, it is hard to see but when it's lined up this comes close to the bushing this one is not so there are two there's usually two ways to go about this one is you can tweak this arm which you can do with a pair of tweezers if you increase this angle it will pull the brush back a little bit it will also add tension so we got a little, a little bit careful okay so I have increased this angle some it is hard for me to know if I got the if I've got this straight in the camera to be able to see properly um, to my naked eye it is really really close Uh, I might still need a little bit more. All I'm doing is turning the the tweezers a little bit um, to fix that. And I've intentionally picked one that is not quite right. Uh, so that for that purpose, I've tried to you know make sure these are real close on the ones that are for sale. Uh, it is hard to keep this in focus as well. Now. So you, that, that controls your timing. Step two is your brush tension. Um, if your brush tension is too little, it, you know, it'll run good at 12 volts, say, but won't run very good at 18 volts. Um, so the common rule of thumb is if you pull one brush arm down, a lot of people will say, now, you just want a reference point as to how far down the other arm falls down on itself. Like that falls where the brush, you know, you can either do it by the brush arm or the brush itself. Like, so that brush is, just barely falls to the bottom of the bushing. And the other side, you know, goes to the same spot. If they line up in the middle here, where the shaft would be, they should go to the same place when you do this okay now to increase tension what I do is I come back here to the spot closest to where it's anchored and you add some tension to it sometimes they will do this and you just pull it back now you see after doing that we're not quite in the middle anymore we are leaned down that way towards the bottom I would still add. I, I I like to put the brush at the bottom of the bushing uh, overall. Uh, the you know uh, some people say they like the brush arm in the middle of the hole. Like that's that's about the middle of the hole. Let me just add a little more here. It's hard for me to do it through the camera lens and not with my actual eyes. Um, so then you can see it's definitely pushed down uh, some, and we will come in here, and that's, you know, it's just below that point. Now, you either want to come back in and you want to do the other side to make them match up in the middle again. So now I've got it matched up to where it's back really close to the middle. I can still pull one 
Sometimes you'll do this and you'll pull an arm away and you have lost a little tension because you over pulled one side. So it's a little bit of a back and forth. Just a little bit. So now that I've gotten it to where it still drops where I want it to drop to, and it's centered, that is what I would get, that's what I would be looking for. Uh, the other thing that is important to note is, get that pushed in there. Uh, you can, okay, so one thing that can happen that's very bad is if you overstress this you will lose tension okay so the idea here is to only stretch it as far as you need to to get the motor to go in uh, and use a small you know the smaller plastic spacer there so once I get the brushes opened up a little bit like that I will get the motor started and everybody's different you know you can open this up a little more you know Get that thing in there. You just want to just open it just enough. You don't want to go any further or else you will screw some things up. You will lose tension, likely, if you do. Okay? And that's that's the key things there. That's the end bell for dummies approach. Uh, you know, that's very simple. There are ways you can adjust things uh, to make the brushes hit differently. More on the leading edge, less on the leading edge. Things like that. Um, there are also, there are also some tools like this, uh, Onslaught makes this, it's a very useful tool. Uh, I actually use this to break them in, uh, before they leave the shop here. You open it up. This is a diamond tool. This, this can do one of two things for you. If you're putting... You know, if you're adjusting your arms, per se, you can see how the... I have not sanded this. I have not filed this one yet. Normally I file all of them. Um, you open it put in there, but you can actually look down in there with this tool. It's extremely hard to see, but you can actually see with your naked eye that brush is leading a little bit on the leading edge, the one up, the one down here, and the one up here, maybe just a hair on the leading edge, but right there. Um, so with, when that happens, you know, you if you really want it to be even, you can, you know, increase this angle. This is the angle I worked on a little bit. We still need just a little bit more. Um, and then you can put it back in and look at it before it before you sand it. Now, sanding it breaks it in extremely fast. This brush material on is the same as the fusion brushes, and those brushes tend to last an incredibly long time. So breaking them in takes a long time, but they already are curved for the armature, so it's not as long. Uh, but it does this. Uh, this tool just speeds the process up immensely. Highly recommend them. They're at twenty-five dollars. If you're going to do a lot of your own breaking stuff, um, and you just turn it, and get it all broke in. It gets. Uh, Sean says it gets about ninety percent of the way there. Um, I haven't actually asked him about how how much to turn it. I just turn it until I see good conductivity. You know, a good connection between the brush and the 
phi all the whole way, and you can see all the brush dust. And uh, I mean, there's probably excess from me breaking them in. Um, and then this end bell would just, you know, you'd pop it in, see how it runs. It should run very good. These automatically have about 20 degrees of timing pre-built into them, like this. Uh, so I do recommend zero timed armatures. Uh, I recommend that for now. I haven't had a lot of race time, and they're brand new, so that could be wrong. Uh, I'm getting really good dyno numbers with zero time motors, um, which is the point of it. But you know, there are tracks and there are situations where you will want an advanced time. Uh, so that's uh, that's my end bell for dummies uh, or beginners. Uh, you know, things not to do, to do. Um, and let me know if you uh, have any questions. Thank you. Uh, something else uh, with the end bell. These bushings are, they do not, they are not pre-oiled. Make sure you put oil in them. That, that always helps. So, uh, and this, and these new bushings are, they've got a taper. So there's a little room for the oil to actually sit right on the outside here. I can show you that by putting this in real quick. Um, it's designed that way. So that way there is a little bit of an oil platform. Uh, because unless it's centered bronze, you know, there's really no no holes there for the oil to sit in. So you don't, you know, so you need to oil it more regularly. Um, but you can see, you can see the shaft moves all over there. But if you take the motor and you try and move it left and right and up and down, it just wiggles because the bushing is a very tight fit back towards the comm because the comm needs to be solidified so you know if you put put a nice dab of oil in there it will seep down in and it should hold a little bit there and uh, hopefully that'll increase uh, you know cause there's times when you can oil a bushing and it doesn't seep into where you need it to and in a race that can be a problem because then you over oil it then you get too much in it etc